Hi everyone, I am once again Dr. Hariharan, Professor of Biotechnology. So in today's lecture, what we are going to learn is the various steps involved in gene cloning. So gene cloning has various steps. First, I will tell out what are the various steps involved for this uh, uh, inserting the foreign gene into the host cell. So the first step is the isolation of DNA from the specific target cell. For example, if I want to isolate a DNA of insulin, so gene of insulin, then I have to get a target cell where the insulin gene is present. So consider it's a human cells means then I have to isolate the DNA from the human cells. That is the first step. This is can be done with a simply in a laboratory. So the next step comes is that the isolated DNA which is in pure form should be cutted with the help of a restriction endonucleus. So the first step is the isolation and the purification of the DNA and the second step is the cutting of the DNA with a restriction endonucleus. So why we are cutting the DNA? DNA is a very long segment which carries numerous genes. So in, out of these genes, the particular gene is of our interest which should be inserted into the, uh, which should be produced in a large quantities. So what we are doing is we have to cut this DNA. How we can cut the DNA? In the older ways, we were cutting the DNA with a physical means but the problem is that uh, we cannot get it a precise cutting of the gene. So later on the discovery of restriction endonucleus has made the precise cutting of the gene or the precise cutting of the DNA was possible. This restriction endem generally produces two types of ends. One is the sticky end and second is the blunt ends. Uh, out of this, the most probably for the research purpose, people prefer sticky ends because the sticky ends can be annealed later on very easily. So the, our first step which is the isolation of DNA and second is the restriction of the DNA. After cutting of DNA what we have to do is we have to separate these fragments individually. So the separation of these fragments was uh, possible with the help of a technique called gel electrophoresis. So the gel electrophoresis uh, basically works with a principle which is a separation technique works with a basic principle of separation based on the charge and the mass that is the size so in this what happened is the dna is generally separated with the help of a horizontal agarose gel electrophoresis so the agarose produces a gel and in that we prepare a well and in that we add all fragments of the dna so we apply the charge we apply two electrodes one is a negative another is the positive the dna itself is a negatively charged molecule so what happens in this separation techniques the negatively charged molecules based on the charge is started moving on the smaller dna fragments move away and the larger fragments will be near to the well so this gel electrophoresis will helps in the separation of dna uh, effective manner so our first step which is the isolation and purification of DNA then it is followed by a cutting of DNA then our third step is the separation of the DNA by gel electrophoresis now so the fourth step which is the very important step happens is that we have to identify the gene of interest for example if I want to produce insulin in large quantities I need the gene which is coding the insulin so how I can identify this gene of interest so the gene of interest can be identified with the help of a technique called a southern blot which is developed by Edwin Southern so the southern blotting is a hybridization technique uh, like a child playing a game with uh, two blocks one is uh, one is a blank one another is a protruded one which it precisely fits into it so it gives an exact complementary in nature so similarly what happens in southern blotting is that the dna generally exists in double standard form so what happened is that this double standard form will start at denatured and uh, which we got from the gel electrophoresis it is separated into a two single standard form and one of the strand is transferred to a nitrocellulose or nylon paper the next step is that we use a probe dna which is complementary to the gene of interest is filled with that so the 
pair which is complementary in nature will get annealed and it is identified with a radiography technique. So the southern blotting will help in the identification of the DNA which is the fourth and very important step. So I once again remind that the first step is the isolation of DNA from the target cell and purification. The second is the restriction of the DNA and third is the separation of the DNA by gel electrophoresis and fourth is the identification of the DNA by southern blotting. So next steps comes is that the insertion of this foreign DNA into a uh, carrier called as vector. So the fifth step which is the insertion into a vector, this is possible once first we have to identify a vector. So choice of the vector becomes an important criteria. So vector is nothing but a carrier DNA molecule which may be a plasmid, which may be a bacteriophage which may be a cosmid or a chromosome like an artificial bacterial or yeast chromosome even mammalian chromosomes are also used nowadays so in this diagram i have put out of the uh, vector which is plasmid in nature generally plasmid is an extra chromosomal dna of a bacteria uh, which is isolated and this isolated DNA plasmid has been restricted more or less with the same restriction engine. So it cut precisely the same end where the gene has been cutted. So after cutting of this vector by the restriction enzyme, then what we are doing is we are inserting this uh, foreign DNA into the vector. So this will produce us, uh, this joining can be done with the help of an enzyme called DNA ligase. DNA ligase will effectively join this and produces an RDNA. So this uh, RDNA, the next step is pro proceeded, it should be inserted into a host cell. A suitable host cell is selected in which this RDNA has been inserted. So the insertion can be done by various methods. Generally it may be a physical means like with the help of an electroporator or with the help of a chemical means using a calcium ion. So once we insert it, in that we will get a two types. Some cells might have taken the RDNA, some cells might have not taken this RDNA. Then we have to make a choice which cell is carrying the RDNA. So this can be identified in our next step that is the identification of the DNA clone by some uh, identification technique generally we call it as a replica plating technique. So in this technique what we will do is the wild strain generally doesn't grow in a minimal media whereas the we inserted strain that is the RDNA strain can grow into this media. So after this one, this uh, isolation of this RDNA clone, it is cultivated in a large scale in for the production manner. So this RDNA clone has to propagate it. That means the for RDNA vector carrying the gene should move to next to next generation. So this is the final stage that is the propagation of the RDNA clone. So once the RDNA clone started propagating, we will produce a large quantities of DNA. Uh, carrying the foreign gene. So the final output of this is that the RDNA that is the foreign DNA we can get in large quantities that can be used for the construction of genomic libraries or if the vector is used as an expression vector then this can be used for the production of the RDNA products. So I once again summarize the steps which is involved in the gene cloning is that the first step is the isolation of DNA from the target cell and its purification. The second step is the cutting of the DNA with the restriction endonucleus. And the third step is the separation of this DNA with the help of a gel electrophoresis. Then the fourth step is that the identification of gene of interest with the help of a southern blotting techniques. Then the fifth step is the cutting of the vector with the same restriction endonucleus. And the sixth step is that insertion of this foreign gene into the vector with the help of a DNA ligase. Then the seventh step is this insertion of this RDNA into a suitable host cell. Then the eighth step is that identification of the RDNA clone from the wild cell. Then the final step is the propagation of this RDNA clone. Once we achieve all this step in a very precise and effective manner, we can get an RDNA clone very effectively. 
I think so this lecture will be very helpful for you understanding about the various steps involved in our DNA technology. So I will thank you very much for your things and in future you can find the lecture of each and every steps individually. So thank you very much. Thank you.